Welcome to the RJI Futures Lab, where we help you make your organization more innovative. I'm Ruben Stern. This week, a visit to Mashable to learn how they create content that connects with audiences. Over the past decade, Mashable has risen from a small tech blog into a general interest site that attracts 40 million monthly unique visitors and has snapped up high-profile journalists from mainstream publications like the New York Times. Editors at Mashable say their success comes from staying on top of what people are going to be talking about. We are we're news for people who are on the internet. We're news for people who live their lives online. We want to give them stories that make them want to start new conversations. You know, I always like to say, if you came to Mashable's homepage, what I want you to see as a reader is a story that represents everything that everyone's talking about. Like, okay, they, they are definitely relevant, they, there are humans sitting there, and they know what's going on in the world. I also want you to see a very different take on that story that you haven't read yet anywhere else. You know, a lot of people talk about how news organizations sort of have to give people their their candy and their vegetables um, and you know there's the fun stuff and then there's sort of the hard news that informed people should know about we want to do the hard news that people should know about but we want to do it in a way where they would then want to tell their friends about it because if you don't want to tell someone else about it then it probably doesn't really matter to you either um, I think that maybe is a little bit of a difference. We don't really feel an obligation to cover uh, every single you know, news item of the day. We feel an obligation to cover the things that we think our audience is going to find interesting. And a lot of that is judging what we might find interesting. So I have to think about the writers I have, the talent they, that they possess, and how they can best leverage that talent to cover the story in a different way. Um, the CIA torture report for example, we knew this was coming. And we decided that we would do a sort of live blog of, of us reading through the torture report and also watching other people read through the torture report and bring that together as, as we're all sort of going through it together and make it a shared community experience. The Mashable team says it can predict viral content thanks to an in-house tool called Velocity, which helps set the editorial agenda. Velocity, which is something that our product team has worked on for you know, over two years, which is a program that sort of tells us the stories that the internet is talking about, that, they, that it identifies stories around the web that it feels are going to bubble up and become viral. What that system does is it's really going out and scraping uh, a, a wide swath of the internet and then bringing in uh, a bunch of articles, videos, and other content into the system, then analyzing how those pieces of content are being shared and how quickly they're being shared, whether they're being picked up, uh, and trying to figure out, all right, can we identify which pieces of content look like they're about to go viral based on sort of the algorithmic analysis of what we've seen in the past. It's really fascinating and it's also a really great opportunity for the newsroom team to work with our product team and dev team. And so it's a really collaborative spirit. What we then do is, you know, we repeatedly are sort of checking uh, our dashboard uh, throughout the day. We're also, uh, we even have people from the product team who send us updates throughout the day of which uh, stories are popping on the system that they're seeing. That really can inform us, all right, these are some things that we should be picking up. One of the things that I've learned is how powerful it can be to have a very uh, collaborative, newsroom that goes beyond the boundaries of individual sections or desks or whatever you want to call them and that kind of open communication that can really uh, exponentially increase the, uh, the, the number of stories that people can be keeping track of. So, you know, we have sort of a, a main chat room that everyone is in at all times and people are, you know, our people are our best eyes for identifying stories, but people are going to have interests that go beyond their particular uh, sections. And when people spot stuff, they put it in our main chat room. And everyone's in there, and we're sort of discussing the news of the day. 
You know, Mashable is the only company that I've ever worked for where I felt like everyone is working toward the same goal. I think news is one of the industries that you find a lot of egos in. And I'm not gonna and I'm not gonna say there's no egos here. I have an ego. But it seems like everyone puts Mashable first here rather than themselves. And that's very rare to find in this industry. The collaboration at Mashable includes a series of daily meetings. The goal is to stay ahead of the conversation and coordinate the offerings that come from a real-time news team, a viral content team, and traditional reporters. Their mix of content is likely to keep expanding in the future. You'll see a lot more news video. We're expanding the video team a lot. So you'll see a lot more news video, a lot more original video, boots on the ground video. You'll probably see some mini docs. We, we have dabbled into mini documentaries before and I think they've been wildly successful so I hope that you see more of that but the focus really is on short form news video. But again there's always that challenge of how do you balance video and text together and I think sometimes the best way to do it is to have video clips that are relevant to what you're reading about and show you what's happening or even uh, simply with our uh, with our reviews of the new iPhones that we did uh, this fall, we tried to incorporate short video clips or moving imagery to sort of show you what those products were like at natural points when we were discussing certain features of the products. So throwing things and seeing what sticks is certainly a good way to experiment, but naturally crafting a narrative where the different uh, elements of multimedia are contributing to that uh, single narrative is probably the optimal way to go. We had to build out a team of reporters and we had to build out a team of really good editors and now we're, video is hard. It's, it's not easy at all and online video is really hard. Making a person sit through a 30 second pre-roll ad to watch a video, that's asking a lot. We have to be smart about it. So we needed to make sure that we had all of our team in place and we got the non-video portion of Mashable together before we started running on the the other part, the news video side of Mashable. So in 2015, I think that we're really going to try to start sprinting on that. Mashable also makes extensive use of third-party tools such as Vine, Storify, Storiful, and Instagram's Geofedia. You'll find more information about these tools along with this video. You'll also find links to more about Mashable's breaking news and audience engagement efforts. And that's it for this report from the RJI Futures Lab. I'm Ruben Stern. We'll see you in the future.